guys, so I finally have got around to filming one of my most requested videos, probably only second to my everyday makeup routine, but even then I think it's just a close second. I finally got around to recording my skincare video, my skin journey, my skincare video, my tips, my tricks, how I get this skin looking flawless. Um, I actually have written down like a list of things I want to cover uh, but I'm not trying to make it too lengthy. I think I'm just going to go quite general and just let you guys know about my skin journey and how I started from the bottom and got to here and then I probably record more detailed videos about the different parts and products and stuff like that. So this is more of like a general one. just. Yeah, just to put something out there because I know everyone just keeps asking me. Okay, so my journey really began. I first started getting my breakouts when I was about 13 years old, 13, 14. And that was just on my forehead. Um, I used to just have little pimples. I think it was just teenage hormonal breakouts. And it was just ti those tiny little forehead pimples you get. and. It just kind of ruined the texture of my skin and I was so self-conscious about my forehead like to the point where I would I wanted to cut a fringe to cover it but I knew that would just make it worse because covering it would not help with the sweat and everything. So that was the, my first experience with uh, skin breaking out and it was not pleasant. I was already like an insecure teenager. I really did not need bad skin. So that I just kind of dealt with and I didn't really, I don't think I it bugged me too much. Well now thinking back, um, it doesn't bug me or I can't imagine it bugging me but at the time I, I, I'm pretty sure that it did. Fast forward a couple of years. So then between 16 to 18, that's when my skin got really kind of fucked up. And um, my f spots on my forehead kind of left, but then it's like they just slid down my face onto my cheeks and I couldn't even decide what was worse, my forehead or my cheeks. I hated both, but um, I think forehead was just... Uh, thinking back, it was, I just hated it all. Skin is so important and I understand why everyone wants to know it, the skin secrets. And it can create so much insecurity. I mean, even for me, Growing up having bad skin, I did not enjoy it. And that's why I learned to do my makeup so good on myself because I was so insecure about how I looked. Like I was already quite a, I wouldn't say fat, but I was definitely not a skinny kid growing up, like a teenager. I was more on the heavier side and I was already so insecure about the way I looked. Like that was just extra pressure having bad skin. And then I was also getting braces and stuff and it was just, it was not good. So around 16 to 18 I didn't really do anything to my skin once again. Like I would just do the normal kind of things that you google and stuff and just like try and drink water and stuff like that to try and get rid of them but it wasn't really working. Uh, for some people it's a shock getting bad skin but because it's in my family like my sisters have got, had bad skin. It wasn't a shock, like I knew it was coming and I knew I was gonna deal with it. Um, it still made me insecure as hell. So I knew my skin wasn't just gonna get better with by drinking water or eating healthy. Not that I went out my way to do either of those things, but I knew that wouldn't work for me anyway because I've had it in my family and I know that I knew that my intention would always be to go to a doctor and or a dermatologist and ask them for medication to help me with my skin. So that's exactly what I did. So I went to my doctor and the first thing he did, he looked at my skin and stuff and said, okay, it's not too bad. So what I'm gonna do is like refer you to a dermatologist and then I'm gonna just take it from there. So I went to visit my dermatologist and she put me on birth control. She put me on Yaz. Yasmin? Yes. So yeah, I was about 18, 19 and I went on birth control and it was the worst experience of my life. 
It might have been like self-fulfilling prophecy because I researched the pill and there were so many side effects to it that I was so paranoid already to go on it that I think I just, my body was just, wanted to reject it when I took it. So I just remember like one time that really stands out to me. I wasn't on it for long, I must have been on it for like a week, if that. I was in a lesson and I got so ill, like to the point where, okay, this is gonna sound like I'm exaggerating, but I really felt like I was gonna die or something. I had to go home, I was, I felt like I had to throw up, my whole body felt weak, but I, I didn't know what was going on, and but I knew it was a side effect to the pill, so a few hours passed after I got home and thankfully it calmed down, but that was the last time I took the pill. Having said that now, and actually thinking back, it might have been my doctor that put me on the pill, not my dermatologist. I don't think I went to my dermatologist until later on. But either way, I think that's an insignificant fact, piece of information anyway. So I went back to my doctor and I told him that that was my reaction to Yasmin. And he took me off it and then he was going to put me on a, a different kind of the pill. Like, you can get different, ki different kinds. And I was just like, I don't want to go back on it. I want, like, proper medication for my skin. So if I remember correctly, he put me on Limacycline straight away, which is the first medication I ever took, like, directly linked to sorting out my skin. I think that was definitely, I think that was the first one. It's the only one that stands out as helping my skin or changing my skin, so that's what I'm going to go with. Yeah, so I must have been about 19 and I went on Limacycline. I've actually got the pills here. So this is the box. And this is the pill. And because I don't take them anymore, like, I'm just gonna show you. It's just like that. That's it. And I've got, actually still got two boxes. Because I'm gonna explain my experience on Limacycline. So, first, uh, when I was put on that, um, I didn't see um, I didn't see anything straight away. I think I must have seen something about three to four weeks in, and I did see my skin started smoothing out, and my breakouts more or less went. I didn't have the worst skin. I didn't have like cystic or nodular acne. Mine was pretty much like a bacterial sort of one that just needed control, like. Yeah, I just had control issues or something. Yeah, so I went on Limacycline and I was on that for six months. First, I was on quite a, uh, I was on about, I think, one pill a day and then my dose got up to two pills a day. Um, and six months after taking it, I think I might have prolonged mine a little bit longer than six months. After six months, my skin was pretty much flawless. Um, I didn't have, because my acne wasn't um, terrible, I didn't have bad scarring or anything uh, like that. So I didn't really need help with that, but he did prescribe me some creams as well, some uh, Duac, and this is one of the creams, Isotrex. But I still had the boxes, so I was like, this is so handy, I can just show you the stuff. My skin was looking lovely. The only thing with going on a medication like that is sometimes it can make you feel a bit fearful about coming off it because you get a bit paranoid thinking what if my skin gets fucked up as soon as I stop taking it and stuff and my doctor told me to come off it slowly so I went from two pills a day to one pill a day then I would do one every two days and then like two a week or something until I was just not taking any anymore. So there I am thinking life is all hunky-dory and everything is good. It must have been like eight months later, a year. I'm so not sure of the specific dates. I think it was definitely less than that, but my skin started breaking out again. And it felt like my bad skin was coming back worse than the first time. And because I had lived life with clear skin, I was just like... Oh, it hit so hard. 
So there I was and I went straight back to my doctor and he put me back on Lymocycline. Now I was on that for probably two, two to three months but this time my experience was not nice. I ended up getting thrush from uh, which is like yeast infection which was the most uncomfortable thing in the world but that was one of the side effects to taking Lymocycline and bear in mind it was four to five months in and I was still taking it and I had become a bit of like an addict to the medication like I was I just didn't want my skin to fuck up again so I, I took it religiously and then it was making me, it started making me really ill. The worst stomach pains ever. And I knew that it was a side effect of the medication, but I wouldn't stop taking it because it was helping my skin. And I always wanted flawless skin. So I like, I carried on taking it. It got so bad at a point, I swallowed one of the pills and it got, it must have got stuck. You know when you eat food and it just gets stuck inside you? That happened to the pill, but it came straight back up and it had popped open. So it came back out my mouth and a big puff of like yellow dust, which is inside it, all blue, came out my mouth. And it was, it was so horrible. Like if you ever, if you ever smell these pills, they stink. If you're very body loving and stuff like that you will you will not enjoy putting this inside your body it stinks so if it smells that bad it's just like what what are you doing to my body you know what i mean because they were they started affecting me so badly um i had to come off them um it was like that's why i've got so many boxes left over because i came off them myself and I was just done with Lyme Cyclone. I will never go back on that medic medicine ever again. Ever. Uh, like. The big side effects of Lyme Cyclone and what I think started happening to me was it can end up killing the friendly bacteria in your gut and replacing it with um, fungi and resistant bacteria. So, um, and that can end up spreading into your stomach and then into your blood which basically can make you seriously ill. So I feel like I was in the initial stages of that happening, so I'm really grateful that I came off it when I did. Lymocycline just didn't really work with my skin. It won't necessarily work for everyone. For some people, it, it's just such a treat. Like, they just do one course of it, six months, and they're done. And But for me, it wasn't like that. I, I took it twice, and it just didn't work for me. So then, um, I started getting really hard spots under my skin especially in this area here and like by my ear. You're not meant to pop your spots, I do know that, but they were so hard, I was so curious to see what was in them and the, the tops of them would be like like a dark purple and that I could just see that on my skin. And when I popped them, the, um, so much blood and pus came out of them, it was, it was so horrible. But it was a little bit addictive, but it was actually painful as fuck as well. Like, because because they were hard, you had to squeeze the fuck out of your skin. That started happening all around here. And basically, I went back to my doctor and I said to him, like, nothing you're giving me is working. And this is when I finally went on the medication that I've always wanted to go on for my skin since I've had bad skin and I understand it's not for everyone and I'm by no means promoting it. I might be promoting it by telling you that it helped me with my skin but at the end of the day it's your own prerogative. If you want to do something and you're old enough, make do your research and make a calculated decision and if it's best for you then go ahead. But this is what worked for me. I always had the intention of going on this medication and I'm super glad I did. So the medication I'm talking about is Roaccutane or Accutane. So let me talk a little bit about my Accutane journey. My Ro We call it Roaccutane with an R. Um, I don't know if it's Accutane, Roaccutane. I asked my doctor to transfer me to my dermatologist. Um, which was a pretty quick process 
like within two weeks I had an appointment and it was just like an initial talk about my skin and stuff and she had a look at my skin and stuff and she was just like hmm are you sure you want to take it and stuff and your skin is not the worst skin that we've seen and it's not really it's kind of the last resort drug that they um recommend to take for your skin but I was full fully ready for like their hesitation and stuff and them to like check with me if I'm 100% sure and I was just I was definite of it I was like yes I've read it I've read I've done my research I know all the side effects like there's some gruesome horrible side effects which I'm gonna come to but I've done all my research and I was like so I definitely want to go on the medication um she ended up I had to end up showing her pictures of how bad my skin got because she looked at my skin and she was just like okay it's just not that bad but then I showed her pictures and stuff and I said to her you know what um like at the end of the day it's about how it makes you feel as well if it's really getting me down having skin like this and I know I've made a very conscious decision I've done my research I know what I'm getting myself into um, I'm really happy to start the process she took all that on board and and she agreed to getting me on the medication. That was a joyous day for me. But then there's a few things that come with going on the medication. Like, um, you have to get weighed. They decide the dose that they're going to put you on based on your weight. Um, every month I had to do pregnancy tests. I can't remember if I was on the pill or not. I don't think I was because I do remember a conversation I had with my dermatologist where I was telling her that I wasn't sexually active so it was not a big concern of mine because that you cannot 100% you cannot get pregnant on roaccutane like it can it can deform your babies and stuff you know in like America you you have to go on two types of birth control so it could be like the pill and condoms in the UK I think it's, it's just one form of birth control so, you have to do your pregnancy tests, you have to do um, blood tests every month. I had to go a week before my actual dermatology appointment for more medicine. I had to go to see my doctors and my nurse rather and get my bloods taken. Every week you have to do that. Um, because the medication is so strong, they need to constantly check on your blood and check that your liver's okay and you're not you're not fucked up basically yeah so as far as I can remember that's that's like the steps that you have to take to go on it yeah I don't have um I don't have any of these pills left because I completely finished all my course and they won't give you any more than the dose that you're meant to be taking they won't oversupply you with um with these pills at the start I think I was taking like one or two a day and near the end I was taking up to three a day. Um, a course on Maracate normally lasts about three to six months. I did the full course, I did six months on it. It's normally given to people with really bad like cystic or nodular acne where it's like really big and um, like pushes out the skin and for me it was always a clear pathway to how I'm gonna get the skin I want and I was always gonna take medicine. It did not really affect me in any bad way at all. I got like the typical side effects of like really super dry skin. I mean initially before I was on Maracatane my skin was definitely oily but since then my skin has totally changed and I would definitely say my skin type is dry now probably maybe combination I mean my entire makeup routine was catered towards my oily skin that's why if you watch my YouTube videos and stuff like you'll notice it's like powder all over my face and that's from when I had oily skin because when I had oily skin and I I wouldn't um, set it with a powder it would be gone in like an hour it was just gone and the pills the medicine really started helping me with oil control About a month in probably like three, three weeks my skin was flawless like it was it was flawless it does push out whatever's under the surface in your skin so it can get worse before it gets better but that's all right you just have to stay patient through that like shit phase and you come out on the other side like uh, after a month 
my skin was flawless. Um, so some of the other side effects you can get, I mean, for me the main side effect I had was dry skin. It was terribly dry, but I, I maintained it with moisturizer and stuff and it wasn't too bad. And plus I live in the UK where it's cold most of the time, so being out in like blazing sunlight and crazy heat is not really a problem in this country because we we don't have any <laughs> one thing i do remember though is when i was in la and it was so hot there compared to the uk and my lips split along here so it literally split this entire outside bit was gone and I tried to cover it with foundation nothing worked like the skin around it started peeling off it was horrible like foundation wouldn't even cover it properly it just looked terrible that's the only thing I really remember as standing out um, other than that um, my skin never really got burnt or anything like that when I was on vacation um, but then again it I did go on holiday near the end of my course so I must have just been like weaning off it I must have just been coming off it when I was on vacation like I didn't experience anything drastically bad or anything like there is things that you can get like body pains you can get back pains you can get migraines and um, your skin can literally start peeling which is a horrible experience but one of my friends I think when she was on it and um, she must have laughed and her whole lip like bust open that's how dry it gets and like you can moisturize daily and you can moisturize constantly I mean I I'm constantly putting Carmex on my lips but it's getting drier so yeah, just expect a lot of dryness. I'm not going to make this a video all about Accutane, but I just want to put in a few things in there just because I feel like I have a responsibility because I'm telling you guys about it, at least to tell you how to go about it in a safe way. So if you do go on it, um, make sure you are staying out of the sun, make sure you are moisturising. Vitamin E is like recommended um, because it's really good for your skin. Um, what else? And one thing you absolutely can't do, which was a real issue for me, is you cannot wax your skin. You cannot do that shit on any of this medication, like Lymocycline or Roaccutane. Anything that's gonna um, help your skin, um, it's gonna make your skin super sensitive, so you cannot fuck with it like that, and you can't be aggressive with it. Like, I wouldn't excessively be... Um, exfoliating or anything like that not when you're on this medication I remember when I was on Lymocycline and I was I got my upper lip waxed and all of my skin came off my upper lip it was terrible it was so painful and I was literally walking around with these brown patches on my upper lip it was shocking please just stay away from the wax it was kind of pretty much my journey so I have just taken a whole lot of medication for my skin. Um, to be honest, I have zero regrets. And if the thing with Roaccutane is for some people, um, it can they they need to take more than one course of it um, because they take one course and their skin can go bad again. But for me, thank God, it's been one year and my skin is still looking great. I'm so grateful. Like. But yeah, you can see guys, like, I know I have makeup on and stuff, but, like, there's no bumps, no scarring, nothing like that. Yes. Okay, awesome. So yeah, overall for me, Roaccutane was the best thing I ever went on. And I understand that every person has a different experience on it. If you do get body pains from the medication, it can stay with you even when you're off it. So that's not good, that's not really a great thing and if you're worried about that you might want to stay away from the medication. Also one of the big side effects of Roaccutane and why it's like kind of frowned upon is the fact that it can trigger depression or if you do already have uh, depression it can make it a whole lot worse. But if you are more prone to uh, getting depression I definitely definitely would not recommend this for you. It can really fuck with your mood. 
with me, it honestly didn't. Um, it didn't make me feel shit or anything, but it can with with some people and everyone's different so just because i've had a good experience on it that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you will so just be calculated when you make a decision before going on it and also when you do go on it make sure you tell at least one person that you are on the medication um it is important that you have support and stuff like that because it is such a crazy drug so yes be safe guys just be safe so to kind of summarize everything um my varicotain journey my whole journey has been excellent so doctor they won't necessarily put you on varicotain it's more like a last resort so you're probably gonna have to go through a few different things before you get there but if your skin is literally just depressing you and stuff like Guys, do look into going to and going to see your doctor. I know there's a lot of YouTube videos to help you with your skin and stuff, but for me, medication was the most effective and yeah, yes. So that's it for my skin journey.